Today we are in Livorno with some other cruise ships and we're going to iconic Pisa. Because we are only here for the day, we're going to do a guided tour. But even if you want to see Pisa at your own pace, watching this video to the end will show you what you will see and things to look out for. The From Tuscany to Pisa excursion is offered by cruise ships in Livorno and it is Vikings included excursion in Livorno. At the end of the video, I will tell you about an extra free excursion you can do if you're on a cruise ship in Livorno. So to begin with, can I ask two things of you? If you have any extra information that will help others, please add a comment. And if you find this video helpful in any way, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and we'll give you the lowdown on other places that you might be interested in exploring. We found on this tour that when going to Pisa, there's a lot of walking and standing and unless you pay for a coffee, there are no seats anywhere for you to sit on throughout Pisa. Pisa is about a 45 minute bus ride from Livorno through the Western Tuscan countryside. The bus followed the same route to and from Pisa. So both sides of the bus gave similar views, although the driver's side gave us better views of the tower from a distance on the ride back to the ship. As you can see, a lot of buses travel to Pisa every day. For safety and to prevent congestion, these buses are not allowed to drop off or pick up passengers near the tower precinct. The bus park is a kilometre, or two thirds of a mile, from the Square of Miracles. So we had almost another half an hour of walking before we reached the tower precinct. On the edge of the precinct, we met a specialist guide for our tour through Pisa. The entrance to the precinct is lined with an array of souvenir and memorabilia stalls. However, on our tour, we did not have time to browse these stalls. The first stop on the tour was the baptistry, which was used exclusively for baptisms. You'll notice that it also has a lean. Despite construction of the baptistry being completed in 1363, it's still the largest baptismal church in Italy. The baptistry is the second oldest building in the precinct after the cathedral. The tour did not include entry to any buildings, so all buildings were only viewed from the outside, although you might be able to peek through a door.
From the baptistry, we moved on to the cathedral. The Campo Santo could be seen on the left. This was built to house a cemetery on top of soil which was brought to Pisa from Calvary where Jesus was crucified. Construction of Campo Santo was completed in 1464, making it the newest of the buildings in the square. The cathedral, which was undergoing some restoration work when we were there, is the oldest building in the square. The original part of the cathedral was completed in 1092, although some enhancements were made in the 1300s. Construction of the cathedral began at the same time as St Mark's Basilica in Venice, and there was significant rivalry between them as to which would be the most spectacular. The next stop was the tower itself. It took 177 years to build the tower. Construction of the tower was completed in 1372. The tower started to lean when the second floor was being built and to compensate, the upper floors have been made taller on one side than they are on the other. This gives the tower a curved rather than straight shape. After viewing the tower, we then walked another 250 metres to the back of the precinct where our tour allowed us about 45 minutes to explore the more interesting parts of the precinct. There was a cafe nearby which offered shaded seating. It was a 500 metre walk back to the souvenir and memorabilia stalls that we passed on the way in. Fortunately, there were two souvenir stalls nearby and although they had a limited range to choose from, they were able to satisfy most people's requirements. The time we had was enough to climb the nearly 300 steps of the tower if it was not crowded, but it would have had to have been done in a hurry and with very little time at the top of the tower. After exploring the precinct, we left the area by a side entrance and walked around the outside of the precinct wall. It was a one and a half kilometre, or a bit under a mile, walk back to the bus. In total, the tour involved about three kilometres, or one and three quarters of a mile in walking.
The bus returned to the ship and there were great views of the tower in the distance on the return trip. So that is our From Tuscany to Pisa excursion. It was very tiring but well worth doing. If you want to see more of what Tuscany and Pisa have to offer then check out our snapshots from Pisa video. There is a link to this below. I said I would tell you about an extra free excursion while you're in Livorno. Well, the cruise ships provide a free shuttle bus every 30 minutes with an hour break for lunch that runs between the ship and the Piazza di Municipio in the Livorno Township so that you can explore this port city independently. If you are travelling to Livorno on a Viking cruise ship, then let me give you the lowdown on how to use the Viking Quiet box audio device. On every excursion with Viking, you will require the quiet box. You'll find the quiet box in your cabin. Each time you use it, you need to put it back in the box it is stored in so that it will charge for the next excursion. We kept our tickets for this excursion in the box with them so that we would not forget them because you have to take this ticket with you to ensure you get on the right excursion. On the excursion, you'll be asked to set the quiet box to a specific channel so that you can hear the tour guide. Usually the channel is the same number as the bus you are assigned to. So if you are on bus 21, you set the channel to 21. And throughout the excursion, your tour guide will have a sign that says number 21. To set the channel, you first have to unlock the device. This is done by pressing and holding both the up and down buttons on the side until the lock on the screen disappears. Pressing and holding them again relocks the device. You can then use up and down buttons on the side to select your channel. After you set the channel, if it's left, then the lock will automatically re-engage. The volume dial is on the top of the quiet box. Do not lose your quiet box because Viking charge 99 US dollars to replace them. Earpieces for the quiet box are also in your cabin. These come hygienically sealed. If your earpiece does not work, Replacements are freely available on excursions. Well, that is our time in Livorno, Tuscany and Pisa. I'm sure that you will find it breathtaking.